Hi, awesome students. This is Mrs. McKinney, the digital Mrs. McKinney to help the actual Mrs. McKinney. <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk a little bit about watercolor. And I want you to understand before we get to that part of our project, how best to use watercolor so that you have a little information before you start. Watercolor comes in a couple different forms. You can either get um, hardened watercolor and just add water, or you can get tubes of watercolor. For most of you, I'm guessing we'll be using the hard watercolor so that you can activate it with water. And when we're dealing with watercolor, we want to remember that the key word is water. So water flows a certain way. Once you understand how that is, how water works, you're going to find it's much easier to control your watercolor pictures and make your paint go where you want it to go. So water always flows to where there is less water. So it'll go from more wet to less wet. So we're going to experiment a little with that to show you what actually happens. For example, here I have some purple, so it's violet, watercolor on my brush and I'm going to put it on a dry piece of paper. It's going to flow onto the dry paper. You see that? And it flowed onto the dry paper. No surprise there. Now I'm going to take a brush that's slightly damp, but mostly dry, really. And I can actually pull some of that paint up off the paper because my brush has less water on it. The water on the paper will flow onto the brush. So you can use that principle that water flows to where there is less water to actually pick up paint off your canvas if you need to. So it works between the canvas and the brush or the brush to the canvas, but it also works between the paint that's on the canvas. So for example, we're going to take, let's see, let's do, we'll do a little bit of paint on the paper, just like this. All right, so now I have an area that's wet with paint, and now I'm going to take another color and that's pretty wet right now, and I'm going to go next to it. Now notice that these are probably equal areas as far as how wet they are. And what happens when you have two areas that are equally wet, they blend together when you put them side by side. So we have the violet, and we have alizarin crimson, and they're blending together <clears throat> pretty well. The alizarin crimson might be a tiny bit more damp. If I wanted to blend these together, I could just go over this area between them with a brush that isn't very wet and help them blend a little. But basically, the two colors are blending together because there are two areas that are equally wet. So the water from both sides is equal. One side isn't higher than another. They're equally wet, so they just blend together like this. All right, if we have an area that is, for example, We'll use a little alizarin crimson this, this time. And I'm not going to make it very wet, and I'm going to let it dry for a minute. <clears throat> because I want to show you what happens when you have an area that's not very wet, it's maybe just damp, and then you paint next to it with something that is very wet. So what will happen is the wet side will have higher water, the drier side will have lower water, and it will flow into that. What happens is it causes something, actually maybe I'll use the purple because I think it'll, it'll be more obvious that way, the violet. What happens is it causes a bit of a bloom. Now if I'm looking across the paper right now, I can't see any sheen on that. There's no glisteny look to it. And if I paint next to it, if I put water next to it, a very, very wet, it's going to flow into that. And sometimes it causes what's called a bloom. For example, if I just take just like regular water and drip it into it. You can see that bloom, that cauliflower look that's caused. That's the area with more water spreading into the areas that had, have started to dry, aren't fully dry. Um, and so it's like this side was still very wet. So you don't see much of a bloom over here. It's just mixing together. This side was partially dry already. So you get this kind of cauliflower look. Some artists don't like that. They don't want it on their paintings. Some artists do like it. It just depends on what you like with your painting. So just be aware that that more water spreading into something that's already dried quite a bit is going to cause that kind of a shape. 
However, if you put water into an area that's very wet already, it's just going to blend with it. It's just going to mix with it. It's going to water it down a little bit. It'll take a little longer to dry, but it's really not going to cause that cauliflower shape that will here. So you can see the difference between those. The next thing we're going to do, now that we know a little bit how watercolor works, is we're going to do some washes. So there are three things that I want to show you that you're going to be using when you're doing your picture. You're going to be using solid areas of wash, you're going to be using gradated areas of wash, and you're probably going to be using areas where you want two colors to blend. It's very important to remember what we can do based on what water does. So first we're going to do just a regular area of wash. We've actually already done this. I'm going to use the violet. And you can see, make sure it's showing up, you can see that I'm just, I've loaded my brush really well and I'm just making a solid area of color. And when it dries, it's going to be fairly solid in its, its color. It's, you might see a little bit of difference, but for the most part, it's going to be solid. If I wanted to make an area where it goes from dark to light, or light to dark, I'm going to start with my dark, and then I'm going to take my water, I'm going to dip, wipe, maybe twice, and go right back, then dip, wipe twice, and I'm just going to the edge of where I was before. Dip, wipe twice, and notice how it's going from dark to light. Dip, wipe twice. You have to think about what you're doing. So what's happened is that each time I dipped my brush in the water, I removed a little bit of pigment. Not all of it, just a little bit. I didn't swish my brush. I did not go like this and clean all the pigment off my brush. I just dipped the tip, wiped to get too much water off because, of course, all that extra water is going to flow towards any area of less water. And then I painted right next to my original um, color. And I did that slowly. Now a, a gradated area like this can be round. I could make a circle with it. I could go from dark on the outside to light on the inside. I could go from dark on the inside to light on the outside. I could make a wavy line. I could make a horizontal line. It can be used in any shape. It's the principle that you go dark to light in any shape. It's very useful when you're painting. Um, another thing that's very helpful is when you have two colors and you want to blend them together, like we did earlier. So I'm going to use alizarin crimson, and I'm going to use cadmium, I think it's medium hue. So it's, it's um, kind of a golden yellow, very golden yellow. And remember, for water, these need to be equally wet. Because if they're equally wet, they will blend. But if one is more wet than the other, I'll get this un unusual cauliflower shape, which if I want it is fine, but if I don't want it, then I don't want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my alizarin crimson area, and then next to that I'm going to make my cadmium medium hue. And then with the lighter color, I'm going to come up into this and just keep going over here to blend them together. And if I need to remove a little bit from my brush, I can do that. If I feel like there's too much paint there, I can remove a little bit. <coughs> but I blend these together now, and as they dry, they're going to blend more so with each other. Just like it did in my original one, I had the violet and the alizarin crimson. So here we have a regular wash, here we have a gradated wash, and here we have where we've blended two colors. And these three ways of doing things are going to be very important for you as you are painting your picture. And one final thing to remember, I'm going to move my canvas over just a little bit. One more thing to remember is that with watercolor, while you can lift some color from your canvas, some colors stain more than others. So some, you can almost take them off entirely, off your canvas.
canvas area once the paint's on there. Some you cannot do that with. <clears throat> Some of them, once they are on the paper, will sink into that fiber and they're just going to be there. So some of them rest a little more on top of it. So if there are areas where you don't want color, this isn't like acrylic where you're going to paint white over the top of a dark color. You need to leave those areas totally empty. So for example, if I wanted to paint, I don't really have the colors out for this. So if I wanted to paint a rose, we'll do a rose and maybe I would do some colors, like do some shapes. I'm going to want to leave some of those areas totally empty. Now, I'm going to clean my brush, and now with just a wet brush, I'm going to go along the edge of some of these areas. This is called a fade out. It's another thing that you would probably like to use while you're doing your pictures. I'm doing a fade out by just moving with a damp brush along the edge of some of these. There we go. Went too far in with that. And with my fade out, I'm just making sure my brush is a little bit damp. But notice that some areas I'm not putting any color in at all. Those areas I want to have stay totally clean. So I'm just going along the edge, and I've made something that looks a little bit like a rose. I think I'll add a little bit of another color in there, some of my cadmium medium there. And if I wanted to add green, add some green here, make some leaves, I could do that. And I may even want to blend those a little bit because hard lines draw your eye to them. And I want this to be soft. I don't want it to be too, too hard because I want people to look at the rose rather than the leaves so much. But there. And I'll lift that a little bit. All right, so here I have just a simple rose, and you can see I got some cauliflowers because I didn't work fast enough and my paint bled into them. It's okay. The point is I want to show you that what fading out is like, and also I wanted to show you how I left some areas white. I have to leave those areas white. I can't go back in and paint white on top of them. Even though some painting sets do come with white, it's probably not going to, um, it's probably not going to be pure white. It's better to leave those areas and not paint them at all. So just an extra example here too of fade out. So here's a fade out example. So here I've painted a shape and say I want to go along the edge and fade out into the rest of the paper. I will not pull my brush across it. You don't want to do that. I'm not going to go up into the paint. I have a wet brush. It's just damp. And I'm just going to go along the edge and get the edge of that paper and the edge of the paint wet. And what's happening is it's going to fade slowly into that that wet area. If I need to, I can dampen the rest of this too. And it's just going to soften that edge. So here I have a hard edge and here I have a soft edge. Your eye is drawn to hard edges usually in a picture. So that's a way to control where people are looking at your painting. So thanks so much for listening to the video. I hope it helps you as we move forward with our project this week.